For the past month or so, we've been talking about difference tests. Uh, this week, I'm asking you to differentiate between some of these difference tests uh, after reading some research scenarios. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what these tests are and what they do. So again, each week we've looked at the uh, the really up close detail of each of these tests. We've calculated them using real data. Uh, we've actually written some of these up in APA style. This week we're just going to talk about I have this data situation. Uh, how would I analyze it if I were going to analyze it? So starting from the top, we have two general groups of difference tests. So we have the t-tests, and here I've listed a couple, and we also have a couple of ANOVAs, analysis of variance that we've talked about. To differentiate between if you need a t-test or an ANOVA, you have to ask how many groups you're comparing. If you only have two groups, so maybe you're comparing males and females, maybe you're comparing one treatment versus one control. With two groups, you will use a t-test. T-tests compare two groups and only two groups. If you are uh, dealing with a more complicated research scenario, you would use an ANOVA. So an ANOVA can handle more than two groups. So here if you wanted to compare uh, perhaps motivation by class status, so we have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, that's four groups, we would do an ANOVA for that. So t-tests compare two groups, ANOVAs handle more than two groups. Now once you've made that decision, am I in t-test world or ANOVA world, you have to decide which kind of ANOVA, which kind of t-test you'll use. So a one sample is going to compare one sample versus a population. Versus a population. Sorry, my computer froze there as I was writing. Versus a population. So it's one sample. It is your sample of data versus some population value. So if you remember back um, quite a few weeks ago now, uh, we talked about uh, IQ scores. So remember I said, uh, I can't remember what town I used, but we proposed that a certain town had a higher IQ than the national average. We know the average IQ is 100. It's just norming data that we know offhand uh, from repeated administrations of intelligence tests, the mean score is 100. So we can collect a sample from a specific town and compare it versus this population value of 100. So you would use a one sample t-test when you have a sample of data that you're comparing against a population value. Now independent samples will be exactly what it sounds like. You have independent samples here, two independent samples. So in other words, you have two separate groups, two separate groups. So here is where we could compare um, males and females on some outcome variable. We have two separate groups. They do not overlap. Um, you're either in one group or the other we put you into a high stress situation, we put you into a low stress situation, but you're only assigned to one of those two independent groups, and then we're going to compare the performance of those two groups against each other. That is the independent samples t-test. With the related samples, again, you're dealing with related samples of individuals. So here we have a couple of different kinds. You could have uh, repeated measures matched, all of those good things. Uh, but with the related samples, your two samples are related in some way. Perhaps, um, let's just say related in some way. So you could have matched pairs where you pair siblings up. You could do uh, look at change within an individual. So if you've taken research methods from us, you know that you have um, a pretest, you have a post-test, right? So we want to know if your research knowledge changes over time. Oftentimes related samples will be change over time. Not always, 
but that is one thing to look out for. So you take a pretest, you participate in a 16-week research methods course. At the end of that course, you take the same test again. You would use related samples t-test to examine that data. One sample, again, you have a sample of data comparing against a population value. Independent samples, you have two separate groups. Related samples, you have uh, a within participants design. Sometimes it's called maybe you're looking at people over time. Maybe you've matched people depending on some kind of um, characteristic trait that they have. Uh, in any case, the samples are related in some way. Moving on to ANOVA, again, if you have more than two groups, you would use an ANOVA, right? Uh, you can use two groups with an ANOVA. In that case, it would just be a t-test, though. The output is exactly the same. So ANOVA, two or more groups. A one-way, so this refers to the one-way or the two-way, deals with the number of independent variables. So here we have one independent variable, two independent variables, right? Uh, so we might be looking at uh, motivation by class status, right? So we have motivation as our dependent variable, class status is our independent variable. Class status has four levels, so we have four separate groups there. So we would need to use an ANOVA two-way, we would have two independent variables. Maybe we look at motivation. We have class status that has four groups, right? Freshman, sophomore, senior, all those kinds of things. And then we also want to look at gender. Gender has two groups, right? Males, females. So here we have two independent variables on some dependent variable. Here in my example, I'm using motivation. So one way means there's one factor, there's one independent variable that you're comparing across. Two way you have two independent variables, two things that you are looking at. You get a main effect of class status, you get a main effect of gender, and then you get the class status by gender interaction effect. So you can look at this in a more complicated way that probably reflects real life much better. So these are all of the tests that we've talked about uh, up to this point in the course. How can you read a research scenario and decide which of these tests to use? So let me give you um, some steps that I would use. So the first thing I would do, read the research scenario. You're going to have to read through this a couple of times to understand what's going on. I would identify all of your variables. What's your independent variable? What is your dependent variable? So remember, the independent variable is what the researcher changes or manipulates is another way to say that. The researcher will manipulate a variable. So that is, we assign people to a high stress or a low stress group. So we're changing that value for people. Dependent is our outcome. We're saying that whatever this is, it changes based on what independent category you're in. So it depends on the independent variable. So if you're in the high stress, your dependent variable will look one way. If you're in the low stress, your dependent variable will look a different way. So independent variable is what the researcher changes. The dependent variable is what we're trying to change uh, when we change this independent variable. Once you have those figured out, I would ask how many groups do you have? If you have two groups, you know, of course, that you're looking at t-tests. So there you've eliminated two tests from your possibilities. If you have more than two groups, of course, you're going to um, go with an ANOVA, in which case you are uh, down to two choices. Uh, so worst case, you could flip a coin and there are pretty good odds there, right? Uh, so ask yourself, how many groups do you have in those independent variables? Um, two. 
you go with t-tests more than two you'll be looking at ANOVAs. Step three you'll have to define what kinds of groups do you have. Are your two groups a sample and a population value? If so, you know that that is a one sample t-test. If your two groups are two independent groups that have been assigned by a researcher in particular, uh, you know that's an independent samples t-test. If your two groups are performance on uh, a research methods quiz before and after a course, of course that's paired samples. So what kind of groups do you have? This will help you answer those questions. Let's try to do this with a couple of examples. Let's see if I can... Um, okay, I'm not actually able to zoom in a little bit, but hopefully you can read this. Um, childhood participation in sports, cultural groups, and youth programs appear to be related to improved self-esteem for adolescents. In a representative study, a researcher compares scores on a self-esteem questionnaire for a sample of 100 adolescents with a history of group participation and a separate sample of 100 who have no history of group participation. So let's find our dependent variable first. So let's see. Compare scores on a self-esteem questionnaire. This is our dependent variable. So basically what it's saying is participation in these things will change your self-esteem. You participate in these things, your self-esteem increases. Uh, if you do not participate in these, you tend to have lower self-esteem. This is our dependent variable. From there it tells us we have a sample of 100 adolescents with a history of group participation. That sounds like a group. history of participation in these kinds of things. We have 100 that have no such history of this participation. So it looks like we have an independent variable that they haven't named here, but you could call it participation if you wanted. Participation. You have two levels here with a history of group participation and no history of group participation. So you have two separate groups, they've told you that right here, separate groups. So we know two groups, so it's a t-test. Looking at our list of t-tests, we know we have two separate groups, so that is going to be independent samples t. Independent samples t-test. Now, um, I also asked you to do a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So remember, the null is going to be generically no difference, right? For all of these tests, our null will be that there is no difference. Our alternative will be that there is a difference. So your task would be to um, specify here what it would be. No difference. So there's no difference in this research scenario. You would say participation in um, sports, cultural groups, and youth programs has no effect on self-esteem. That would be your null hypothesis. That is a statement of no difference. To say there is a difference, of course, you just say the opposite of that, and they've given you that here. Childhood participation in sports, cultural groups, and youth programs does improve or does have an impact on self-esteem. That would be your alternative hypothesis. So every single difference test on this list will have a null hypothesis of no difference. Every single test on this list will have an alternative hypothesis of a difference. Your task is to identify the variables and make a more specific version of this difference statement. So let's do that with one more example and then we'll stop here. Um, researchers interested in the effect of moderate intoxication on driving performance. So we have driving performance. Looks like our DV already. Looks like we might have moderate intoxication as an IV. We'll come back to that. 
Researchers interested in the effect of moderate intoxication on driving performance recruited 40 drivers. Half of the drivers drove a driving simulator, well, that's a mouthful, after consuming a low dose of alcohol, and half had not consumed any alcohol. So, after consuming a low dose of alcohol, half did not consume any. Additionally, half of the participants in each of these groups were highly experienced drivers, while half were relatively inexperienced. So it sounds like we have another variable. Highly experienced, relatively inexperienced. The researchers measure, measured the driver's reaction time to a stimulus presented and their peripheral vision, with longer reaction times indicating worse performance. Okay, there's a lot going on here, so let me change some colors here. Our dependent variable is driving performance. Driving performance, so they've said that right here. They're interested in the effect of moderate intoxication on driving performance. That is our DV. Let me change colors here just to be clear. We have a couple of independent variables. So we have um, alcohol consumption, alcohol no alcohol, so half had not consumed any alcohol, the other half had consumed a low dose of alcohol. Low dose. And then we have experience. Experience. Now we have half were highly experienced. Highly experienced group. The other were relatively inexperienced, so I'm going to call that low level of experience. Now, we have two groups here under alcohol, no alcohol, low alcohol. We also have high experience and low experience. So we have two groups. Taken together though, we actually have four groups because you're going to have no alcohol, high experience. You're going to have no alcohol, low experience. You'll also have uh, low alcohol, high experience, and then you'll have a low alcohol, low experience group. So we actually have one, two, three, four groups. So with four groups, we know that we're looking at ANOVA. From there, we have to ask ourselves, how many independent variables do we have here? So we have alcohol, that's one. We have experience, that is two. Two-way between subjects. ANOVA, two-way between subjects, ANOVA here. Two independent variables, of course, one dependent. You always have one dependent in this class. Four separate groups total, so we know this is a two-way between subjects, ANOVA. Null hypothesis would be alcohol and experience have no effect on driving ability, right? So our null hypothesis should always be one of no difference. Alcohol and experience have no effect on driving ability. Our alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, alcohol and experience have an effect on driving ability. So, alcohol and experience have an effect on driving ability is our alternative hypothesis. This is what I'm hoping uh, to see from you all in your homework this week. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, please do send me an email, contact our course assistant. We'll work with you to get this completed. And uh, good luck. We'll see you next week.